Hi guys, well today we're going to be taking a look at the Shuttle NC01U. Now this is essentially a mini PC which sits within the XPC Nano series. Now this particular unit arrived at the tail end of last year, but it was only kind of just hit the UK market, which is why we're having a look at it today. Now believe it or not, Shuttle has actually been designing and producing these small form factor PCs for over 30 years. So with this being our first look at any Shuttle products, we're really intrigued as to how capable they really are. NC01U is an elegant small form factor PC which is based on Intel's Broadwell architecture. So as well as a capable processor we also have lots of functionality in and around this unit which should satisfy most needs. Now the price for this unit will vary depending on the CPU that you go for but under the current specification that we've got with the i5-5200U you're looking at around £300 in the UK, $445 in the States. This one is the second most expensive in the lineup. Uh, the cheapest is the uh, Celeron chip, which costs around £100. That just gives you a bit of an idea of the price range. So hopefully, this will be a nice little unit to perhaps have in the living room as part of a home entertainment system, or perhaps in the office if you are short on space. All right, guys, well, we're going to start with a quick unboxing on our XPC Nano. So here you can see we've got quite an eco-friendly type of approach to the packaging. Uh, so if you don't require this box afterwards, then you can pop that into the recycling. At the top here, we've got this handle, which is quite handy. You know, if you're perhaps wanting to transport the unit, you can pop it back in there and you can use this handle to transport. Now, over on the sides, they are pretty much the same. The only thing really to mention is this one here, which gives you a bit of a rundown of what the hardware is inside and also the stuff that it uh, supports. So our particular unit is... Uh, using the 5200U, that's the i5, that's Broadwell, and uh, we've got support there for DDR3L and things like that. Um, we're not gonna run through those because obviously throughout the video, we're actually gonna be covering them anyway. Okay, and inside the box, first of all, we get the system itself inside a nice plastic cover with the uh, styrofoam pads on either side just to keep it nice and protected while it is in transit. Now we've got the accessories pack, which if I just open out, I'll show you what you get included. First of all, we've got the power pack here, which is nice and small, nice and lightweight, as you can see, and it's compact there inside my hand. And then we've got the uh, power cable, which is going to be specific to your location. And then we've got the driver CD with all the utilities and everything on it. But the thing with this, um, we do not have an optical drive on this particular system. And uh, obviously, if you're going to be wanting to use this, you're going to need uh, to source yourself an external drive which you know, kind of defeats the object of this whole thing. Um, really, these guys should be including a USB stick with all this stuff on it. It makes it much more handy, much more useful for you to uh, you know, get on with your job. Now, we've got the startup guide here just to give you a bit of a run through. Um, it shows you specific things, how to install, and uh, just various bits, how to get inside the unit itself. Then we've got this stand here, so if you don't want to have it flat, you can have it vertically aligned like this, um, and it just screws in at the bottom. And then we've got the vase mount, so this will allow you to um, install your uh, system on the back of a display, and we've got multiple different uh, sizes there. We've got the smaller and then the bigger ones. Okay, so here is the NC01U. Now the external design is probably very familiar, as many PCs are generally this shape and size. But regardless, the styling here that Shuttle has implemented is excellent. The unit is going to look great next to the TV or wherever you're planning to have it. Now the only thing that we would say is that you know, due to each of the sides, and especially that top there having the glossy finish, it does pick up fingerprints and scratches pretty easy. So being a small form factor PC, this unit is obviously nice and compact, and you can either have it uh, sat horizontally, vertically with the adapter, or attached to the back of the display with a vase mount. Now the dimensions are as follows. It's 141mm long, 141mm wide, 29mm high, and the unit weighs less than a kilo. So you know, based off that, the NC01U is going to be easy to transport if you are on the move. All you've got to do is pop it in a bag and away you go. Now, casting an eye over the front edge of the unit, we've got a glossy back panel hosting twin USB 3 ports with an SD card slot reader sitting above and a gold rectangular power button. So those ports there are going to be useful if you need quick access to data such as photos and other files. Around the back, we have the bulk of the functionality as this is the area really which is going to be out of sight from the cluttered cables. So at the back there, we've got the DC in jack for use with the power pack. 
mini display port, HDMI port, gigabit LAN port that is using the Intel i218LM controller, two USB 2 ports and a headphone and a microphone combo jack. So quite a lot of features there to make use of and those ports there should serve the majority of users. Now around the sides we have some ventilation for the CPU cooling solution and then the Kensington lock allocation so that you can secure the unit if it is staying in situ. Now around the other side we have uh, some more ventilation and then an RS-232 serial COM port. So that port is going to allow you to connect things like a printer, a network device or of course a projector. Although if you can, use one of those digital ports instead but it is good to see some of those older legacy options available. Flipping our shuttle over on the underside there, we have four rubber studs, which act as feet for the unit so that it doesn't slip around on those shiny surfaces. And uh, we also have a specifications label, which gives you things like a serial number. So you may need to refer to that if you do need any technical assistance from shuttle. Okay, so we're now gonna move inside NC01U. And with this unit requiring you to add in your own hard drive and your memory, Going inside obviously won't void the warranty. Now to get inside, you're gonna to have to pop off those rubber studs, detach the screws which are underneath, and then pop off the cover. And once you've done that, you're faced with this one side of the PCB. Now on this side, we have access to a single two and a half inch storage spot. Uh, so this unit comes with no hard drive storage. So we've gone ahead and we've installed a Corsair Neutron GTX SSD. And to install that, shuttle provide a small adapter which screws into the sides of the drive. And then there are two brackets here which line up with the board so you can screw it down. Shuttle also provide a SATA power adapter. So this plugs into the connectors on the drive. And then that ribbon cable there slots into the plug which is fitted on the PCB. Next to that drive, we have a single memory slot and this configuration here supports Sodium DDR3L, which is lower in voltage compared to your standard Sodium DDR3. So again, we've already installed some memory into this rig and we've gone with some Corsair Vengeance memory. So this is 16 gig and rated at 2133 megahertz. Now Shuttle do specify a maximum of 1600 megahertz, but uh, 2133 definitely works. And the other stick is on the other side. This is a two times eight gig kit. And the only other thing really to mention on this side is the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi module. Now we have 802.11ac support, which is great to see. And the adapter responsible for providing this is the Realtek 8821AE. So here is the other side of that PCB. To remove it, you just need to remove some more screws. So here we've got the access to more memory and more hard drive storage. And of course, that CPU and its cooler. Now that cooler involves a single ADA cooling fan and a copper heatsink. And underneath that cooler we've got the Intel Core i5-5200U. So that is the Intel Broadwell part and that offers dual core support with a base clock of 2.2 and a turbo boost of 2.7. Now that chip does come with integrated graphics courtesy of Intel HD Graphics 5500 and that is going to give you up to 4K at 60Hz. Immediately next to the cooler we have a single M.2 slot. Now that is smaller than the common M.2. We're actually dealing with 2242 here which is 42 millimeters. Now there aren't a massive selection of drives around of that specification but it is good to see M.2 and SATA storage available inside NC01U. Now to get to the memory we have to remove that M.2 daughter board. We've already detached the screws. Uh, so here is the second memory slot with our Corsair Vengeance stick already installed. Right guys, well we're now going to do a few benchmarks to give you guys a bit of an idea of the type of performance you can expect from this rig. So obviously with the hard drive and the memory being a variable factor, since those have to be provided by the user, we're not going to be doing any boot up times or transfer rates for those. Instead, we're really going to be focusing on the CPU processing power. So we're going to be looking at Cinebench R15, X264HD for the encoding performance, PC Mark 8, 3D Mark, Minecraft, since this is a kind of low performance type of rig, and we often get asked if something can run Minecraft. And we're also going to have a look at Dirt Rally just to see how it handles a more demanding title. And then towards the end, uh, we're going to be looking at the uh, reading for the CPU temperature and uh, monitor the sound levels as well, just to see how loud that is when the system is fully loaded.
Right guys, well while we've got the system fully loaded, I'm just going to get my microphone off and get it as close to the unit as possible, because that uh, cooling fan has kicked in, and this should give us a bit of an idea as to how loud it is when it is fully loaded. And also if we just come out of the game, we'll have a look at the temperatures, if I just... And there we go, real temp records for us, that we've got a maximum of 77 on one of the cores and then 79 and the minimum there is 43 and 42. Uh, so, still fairly reasonable temperatures there, even under full load, and of course, this is hosting the graphics as well, so uh, it does get quite hot. Okay, so that is the Shuttle NC01U. Now, despite this being an especially compact little system, it is able to provide us with a nice platform for everyday use, and it's really going to be ideal if you're looking for something which will sit next to the TV, you know, for watching movies or for jumping online to uh, do the TV catch-up. And all around the system, this mini PC here, we've got plenty of ports to get access to other devices, such as your external drives, projectors, and bigger displays. And then inside, we've also got the support for uh, SATA M.2 storage, a wireless AC, and then, as with this unit that we've got, the capable Broadwell i5-5200 CPU. Now there are a few things that you do need to kind of bear in mind. You're obviously gonna have to uh, buy your own drives, and by the memory, but also the operating system. That is something that you will need to factor in too. Now there is something else uh, which we didn't mention as there isn't very much info out there. There is an optional expansion kit that you can get for this particular unit, uh, which will enhance the 3D performance. So you get a modular box, it plugs into the bottom of the rig, and inside that box you get an AMD R7 GPU. But to be honest, the 3D performance that you do get with that uh, is really good considering, although Minecraft, uh, we did expect it to be a little bit better than it was. I think uh, there perhaps was a uh, bit of a frame rate cap going on. I did do some research and a few people had experienced the same thing with the new edition of the game. Now guys, as always, the full review is going to be on the screen and in the description very soon. Over there, we're going to include a bit more extra uh, benchmarks, a few extra things over there. So thanks for watching today, guys. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did, then please hit that like button. Please continue to support the channel by subscribing, and I'll see you guys next Friday.